37 cars, 14 manufacturers and over 100 drivers. Welcome to the 2024 WEX season, which is sure to be one of our biggest and our best yet. We're here in Qatar and this looks set to be one of our most exciting seasons yet, no? First time ever in Qatar, really excited for this track, a real challenge. And I think in terms of what this season means for WEC, it's absolutely huge. I don't think there's been this level of quality of manufacturers in any championship in the world, let alone in sports cars. Yeah, it's a massive amount of anticipation for what's ahead. Before we get into any of that, let's chat about our LMGT3 cars and more specifically what this track has in store for them. Because I was on the track walk earlier and there is so much for them to suss out here. A lot of drivers haven't been here before, particularly in the GT3 class. What can they expect? A challenge, a major challenge. A lot of constant radius corners here, so it's going to be super tough. What does that on mean? On the tyres. It means long corners. Okay, okay. Yeah. That, so, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a regular car is generally a single apex corner. These are multiple apex corners almost. Okay. Long flowing corners. Obviously very difficult vehicle dynamically for the tyres. So a big test for the strategists on that one. For GT3 in particular, I'm really interested in the fact that these cars now, as opposed to the LMGT cars of the past, have ABS brakes. Now what that means yeah. is it should theoretically be a bit easier for the silver and bronze categorised <laughs> drivers. So that will be quite interesting to see not only how they cope, but obviously with the traffic and how the traffic flows with being lapped by the hypercars. Well, we have 18 cars, nine manufacturers. Where on earth shall we start? It's difficult. Let, let's do the alphabet, shall we? Shall we start Ooh, that's at very with civilized Aston of us. Martin, I would say, would be a good place I to start? I think that's an excellent place to start. Who have we got looking out for us this year in the Aston Martin? Well, we've got the Heart of Racing team, obviously, that came in partway through last season. They're going to be ultra busy, because not only are they doing a season of the GT3, Allen GT3 Am, WEC category, yep. they've also got the Hypercar programme that's coming on stream for 2025. So those guys are going to be really busy on two programmes, effectively. And, you know, that, that team actually, when you look at what they did last season, really got more confidence as the season went on. Mm. And by Bahrain, you know, they were really up there looking for a, a podium result. You know, Ian James leads that team. He's also the, 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 the brains really behind yeah. what they're going to do in hypercars from a management sense. So, and his qualifying performance has really improved since his time has been in WEC as well. Yeah, he, he's really improved. I mean, he's, he's a really experienced guy. Mm. But then you look at the D-Station guys as well, and it's nice to welcome back Marco Sorensen. Obviously, a, an ex-champion, part of the Dane train, the, the famous <laughs> Dane train from a few years ago. That's going to be interesting to see how he gets on with D Station. Uh, and he's got a silver driver with uh, Erwin Bastar. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes as a new dynamic in that team. So I'm looking down at my alphabet on here. I think I'm next. <laughs> I sound like a children's teacher. It's B for BMW. Talk to me about this, because this is perhaps one of the most hotly anticipated lineups that we have in the work this year. Yeah, the BMW M4 uh, LMGT3 Challenger looks the business. It, it's a mean machine. It looks extremely oh, aggressive seriously. on the track. And the big story, obviously, is Valentino Rossi, a legend of motorsport, nine-time MotoGP champion, somebody who actually has been has a framework of what he's done before. He's done GT3 races. He's driven lots of different uh, cars of that design. He's got some knowledge base there. Mm. I think it's crucial for him being paired with Maxime Martin, who is uh, the 2020 Le Mans champion with Aston Martin. Maxime's got a wealth of experience, a really knowledgeable technical driver, and I think Valentino will learn quite a lot of him. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Valentino Rossi yeah. learning something from anyone. <laughs> uh, a true legend in the spot, but that's what he'll have to do. And I think yeah, his inherent determination is going to be fascinating to see how he tackles a really, really tough proposition a tough program for him this season and of course we do have to acknowledge that it's wrt that's going to be running that car with so much experience in endurance racing between that car and the experience also in the sister car surely that puts them in a really good place heading into this year yeah i think so you know i don't think you can question their record in weka over the last three seasons you know multiple lmp2 champions they've won you know a hatful of races they do have experience in a, a variety of disciplines in, in motorsport. Fanton Voss and Thierry Tassin run a, a super tight organisation there. So, yeah, I expect them to hit the ground running and be right there from the start. C for Corvette Racing up next. Now run by TF Sport, not our usual Yanks, actually a British team. Who can we be looking out for in this little 
Bill Crew. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 funny, isn't it? TF Sports synonymous with Aston Martin in the yeah. past, and then they're going to to Corvette Race and a nice partnership there. So I, you know, I, I sense that they will go on to great things. It may just take a few races to to get bedded in and and understand a, a totally new project for them. But you know, they've 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 got the likes of Charlie Eastwood in there with a bag full of experience. They've got Daniel Junkadea. Mm-hmm who is, you know... That was a big story. An, an ex-factory uh, Mercedes driver and somebody, you know, who, who's raced with some of the, the best F1 drivers in his junior career and, and sort of got some good results. So big things expected of them. But like I say, I think it might just take a couple of races for them to, to hit their straps. Well, perhaps the team that I am absolutely expecting to hit the ground running is the Ferrari with AF Corsa. These guys, a lot of them have already been driving this LMGT3 car in other championships up until now, particularly the likes of Rovera. They know this really well. For me, that's a team I'm going to be looking out for heading into the season. Yeah, and I think, you know, continuity with the 54 crew, Thomas Flo, yes. Castellacci and Davide Rigon as well. You know, they, they won in Fuji last season. They, 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 they just gelled over the last, last campaign. The 296 is a car that, like you say, is, is quite well sorted, well known. So yeah, I, I think they will be a threat probably the 54 car as opposed to the other car but yeah i mean a class in any type of endurance racing wouldn't be the same without ferrari absolutely not i've made myself laugh here i've gone to look at my notes for what we're going to talk about when it comes to ford and all i've done is write in capital letters mustang is that kind of all we need to know or what else is there to the, it the the, <laughs> mule, the mule is kicking the door down oh, in it's LNGC. exciting isn't it it is and it's great it's great to have uh multimatic back and proton competition winning this you've got you know, you've got a great sort of structure of really top companies in that. You've got some great drivers. I mean, it's nice to see Ben Barker getting a factory gig, isn't it? I mean, he's really earned it in his time with GR Racing and Golf Racing in the past. So I just think, quite apart from the noise, which is going to blow everybody away. And the size of the thing as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's just a wonderful addition to the diversity of what we're seeing in LMGT3 this season. Actually, speaking of diversity, for me, one of the really exciting cars that has joined us all the way down the far end of the, the pit lane is a Codis with the Lexus. There's a few really interesting stories in that team. Calvin van der Linde, Jose Maria Lopez, two quite well-known names around the motorsport world. What else can we be looking out for there? It's good, you know, a, a new proposition, really. The Lexus name hasn't raced in uh, the World Endurance Championship before. Obviously, it's part of the Toyota family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pachito Lopez, nice to see him with a, a fresh new challenge. He's yes. achieved so much with that number seven crew. So, you know, he'll be he'll be leading that team. He'll be somebody who'll be pushing them technically on strategy and lots of other things. So, uh, again, it might take them a few races to get to get fully into mm-hmm. the mix. But with, like you say, van der Linde, who has, you know, won a variety of different races in, in GT3 and has, has been a DTM driver as well, and I think Lopez as well. Yeah, they, I mean, they're undoubtedly going to be in the mix come the end of the season, I think. Moving on, up next in the alphabet, Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the team that's going to be most talked about out of those two will be particularly the Iron Dames coming off their win in Bahrain, their first ever win in the World Joe Championship. And what a way to end the LMGTE era. Now heading into GT3, now with Diane Pinn instead of Rahel Frey. What's that going to look like for them? It's the third car in three seasons for the Iron Dames. Tough ask. But they've proved last season they can adapt to a new project. I think Dorian has got a lot of momentum in terms of what she achieved in LMP2 last season. She'd have learned a hell of a lot from uh, the Prima team and with Mirko Bortolotti and yeah. Daniel Kvyat. And she, you know, she shaped up extremely well against some really top professionals there. Michelle Gatting has proven consistency-wise that she's mega. Sarah Bovey, the qualifying specialist and, and somebody who's really come on in terms of what she's able to bring to the party yeah i actually think that that lamborghini huracan has had some development it's had a lot of um, reasonable results in other classes other series so i don't see why they can't get up where they were before there's no reason they've proved as a squad they got strength in depth so yeah i think more of the same i think for the iron dogs and a word for the iron mix squad Iron Lynx, yeah, uh, unchanged lineup. Matteo Crisoni and Claudio Schiavoni as well. You know, we saw last season that they they, they were a little bit inconsistent in terms of what they brought, but mm-hmm. it's all about Schiavoni in that car. If Claudio can do a consistent stint and, and Crisoni can then kick on and, and they can actually build something mm-hmm. in the race, then again, I you know, I don't see any weak links in this this class. You know, there's I'm pretty pretty sure that anyone 
on any given day can be in with a shout of at least a podium, if not challenging for the win. Now to McLaren, there's a lot of fans that are super excited to have them back in the championship. And there's more of a link between their team, United Autosports and McLaren, than I think a lot of people might realise. Can you kind of explain that a bit to me? Yeah, so the United Autosports have been around now for over maybe about 20 years. Mm. They've been racing in all sorts of different national in the UK and international championships, highly decorated team. Uh, Richard Dean, who, who runs the operation, uh, was actually Zach Brown's uh, racing coach when Zach Brown was trying to be a racing oh, driver back in, the, wow. back in the 90s. So nice little sort of factoid there for yep. you. But again, those two have built something very special in terms of what they're bringing to international motorsport. The 720S, again, has been extremely well developed. I think it's got a lot of potential for uh, not upsetting the Apple car because we're talking about McLaren here, United Autosports. But I think eventually they'll be seen as as favourites. They've got some rookies in their, in their driver crew, but they've got some drivers who are experienced in other series. You know, Marino Sato's coming into that team and, you know, he's proved that he's extremely quick and can race with the best um, F2 drivers. So I anticipate, like some of the, the teams we've already mentioned, that it, it may take a couple of races just to, mm -hmm. just to get a bit of consistency and a bit of, uh, bit of precision in there. But yeah, I don't see why they can't be sniffing around for some big prizes by the end of the season. Last, but by no means least, Porsche. A long-standing part of the World Endurance Championship with a new team this year. Yes, Manti are running uh, the, the, the two cars. I think the interesting thing about Porsche is a bit like Ferrari, they, they've got a bit of, they've got a little bit of consistency and, and history and understanding technically what it takes with these cars. It's interesting they've called upon Klaus Backler who's very experienced, you know, he, he knows how to develop a car. So I think as long as they have guys like Richard Lees and, and, and also Klaus, that they can really push Porsche into doing something special again this season. So again, you know, it's, it's almost impossible. Which, please don't tell me we're doing any predictions for this. Give I us don't one think race, I'm cruel enough. <laughs> one race grace, because we need Fine. to see, we need to see where the hierarchy is, who's really getting it right from the start, and it's a 10 hour race. So by the end of it, we should get an understanding of a little bit of where the, where the balance of power lies, I think. We'll come back to your predictions alternative in just a second. For now, so we've got Goodyear tyres on all of these LMGT3s and we've got a new qualifying format. What other things do the fans who might want to watch this race, what do they need to know about this class? I think the key for me is quite a technical one, but the fact that these production sports cars have ABS brakes. Now the LMGT cars didn't have that, the LMGT3 cars do. Theoretically that should make it easier for the silver and the bronze categorised drivers and that will also have a bearing on traffic when they've been lapped by the hypercars because that's where quite often the, the, the drivers, the, the silver and bronze drivers often lose time by going offline, especially here at Qatar it's very dusty yes. offline. That's where you can lose three, four, five seconds a lap easily. And if yep. you do that, you know, three times an hour, you're going to go from P3 to P6 very, very easily. So it's a kind of a technical thing, but ultimately I think that'll dovetail with a sporting matter of just keeping consistency during yep. stints. We mentioned the dust just then with the wind as well. It's going to be an interesting race. One final thought, an alternative to a prediction. What is one team that people should be looking out for this weekend? Harsh still, I know, yep. but... Where do you think a good storyline lies? Well, the, the romantic story would be the Proton for Mustang, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, that is the one to look at. And I think, I know they've done a, a quite a lot of testing. I know that, um, you know, if you, if you ask some people in that team, they've got something quite special there. It's going to be a fan favourite wherever we go because of the noise, because of the look and, oh, yeah. and everything. So I, I, I think that there could be quite... You know, you wouldn't say it's a surprise because the quality that they've got in their operation, their drivers. But mm -hmm. I've just got a feeling that, that, you know, there could be a nice romantic story by, yeah. by Sunday evening here in Qatar. And that wraps us up nicely. So thank you so much for joining me, Sam, for this one. But we're going to have to go and do it all over again because this is just the GT3 video. We're also going to be talking about our hypercars because there's a whole lot more to unpack there. If you want to watch along with us this weekend, you can head to fiaowec.tv to do so. There's a promo code available on our Instagram. Just a little sneaky bit of information between me and you. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you in the next one.